have noticed that in some recent seasons, there have been a handful of NFL players that have an additional patch on their jerseys. Not just the C patch that designates the captains on the team or the team's logo or the Nike branded swoosh, but instead a rather mysterious looking brown patch featuring a man that appears to be what I can only describe as some sort of heroic rendering of a football player. Basically, what I imagine an NFL player would envision if you asked them to draw a football player. You know, standing tall with his chest out in an affirmative stance like he just won a big game. And of course, donning a cape. That's right, a cape. How could we not mention the cape straight away? Any player that you see on the field wearing a jersey with that patch has been selected and won the league-wide Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year honor. Every year, there is a player nominated from each NFL franchise who is deemed to have gone above and beyond the scope of duties as an NFL player. The NFL created the award to honor a player's volunteer and charity work, in addition to his excellence on the field. And then at the end of the year, the finalists are named. And in recent years, the NFL has produced a two-hour primetime award special that airs on the eve of the Super Bowl. In addition to recognition and the patch for the eventual winner, all 32 nominees will receive a donation of up to $50,000 in their name to the charity of their choice. Meanwhile, the final winner of the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award will receive a $250,000 donation to the charity of their choice. All donations are courtesy of the NFL Foundation and Nationwide, one of the NFL's leading sponsors. Interestingly enough, the fans are not actually allowed to vote for who wins the award. Which, let's be honest, knowing how most fan votes go, it's probably a good thing. But each of the past five seasons, Nationwide has sponsored a social media contest that allows the fans to support their favorite finalists on Twitter. The contest itself has a hashtag, hashtag WPMOYChallenge. And then the fans vote by tweeting, along with their favorite nominee's last name. And the players whose unique hashtag is used the most during the contest period earns a $25,000 contribution to their charity of choice. While the second and third place finishers will receive a $10,000 and $5,000 donation. Not only does this little side quest raise additional funds for those in need, it also spreads the good word of what these players are doing off the field and certainly adds a fun wrinkle to the contest. While the award has only held Peyton's namesake since 1990, it has actually existed for quite some time now, dating all the way back to 1970, when Johnny Unitas, the quarterback of then Baltimore Colts, earned the inaugural honor. There have been no shortage of big time names to win the award over the years either. Early on, it was guys like Len Dawson of Kansas City Chiefs fame, George Blanda from the Raiders. Then in the 90s, we saw some superstars like John Elway, Derek Thomas, and Dan Marino take it home. As far as today's elite players, we're talking names like Ladanian Tomlinson, Kurt Warner, and Peyton Manning. Walter Peyton himself actually had won the award too back in 1977. Of course, then it was referred to simply as NFL Man of the Year. But after Peyton tragically passed away in November of 1999 from brutal complications stemming from a tough battle with a rare liver disease, the NFL decided it had to do something to commemorate his life. So in his honor, the NFL renamed one of its most prestigious awards after a fallen former recipient. Originally, it was the recognition and different charitable benefits that were the sole benefits of winning the award. Award. But in 2017, the NFL decided to take it a step further and allow any former Walter Payton Man of the Year Award winners to have the patch embroidered on their uniforms. At the time, there were six current players who had won the award. Drew Brees, Thomas Davis, Larry Fitzgerald, Jason Witten, Eli Manning, and J.J. Watt. And to have six individuals running around with such a noticeable patch on the uniforms really speaks to how highly the NFL thinks of Peyton's contribution to society and the award itself. The NFL runs a pretty tight ship when it comes to what kinds of accessories they will and will not allow their players to doctor their uniforms with. As a result, it is rare you actually see an NFL player wearing any anything, either on his jersey, cleats, or sleeves, that is too out of the ordinary at all in terms of the design. In fact, there are a whole nine pages of the NFL's rulebook that are solely dedicated to detailing out exactly what is appropriate for players to wear before, during, and after games. Nine pages! And if that weren't enough, the teams all have posters plastered on the wall through the locker room giving a visual aid of what kind of alterations to the uniform will garner a fine. For the most part, the code is relatively simple. Everything on the exterior needs to be team colors, and the safety equipment beneath it and on top of their heads needs to be up to code, both in terms of which model they are wearing and how they have it fastened or secured. Even the slightest indiscretions can result in a player finding himself with a hefty fine. 
I know, I know, many of these players that are getting these vines are millionaires, I get it. Losing tens of thousands of dollars still sucks though. The NFL's hard stance on uniform decor does not, however, extend to their own creative ideas. Which is why a handful of players throughout the last few seasons of the NFL action have been spotted donning a little brown patch on the breast of their jersey. And while it's not a team-designated distinction, this man in the cape, like the captain's patch, is a badge of honor. The significance of the award taking Peyton's namesake made waves in the NFL community, as many of today's players are aware of the insanely high standard that Walter set for being a humanitarian and a leader in his community. In Chicago, where Peyton played his entire NFL career, there are tributes to sweetness all over the city. A plaque hangs on the building where Walter Peyton's roundhouse used to stand. The city of Chicago named a high school, Walter Payton College Prep, in his honor. And the University of Illinois opened the Walter Payton Liver Center after his family made a generous donation because they appreciated how he was treated while a resident there. The commemoration of Peyton's life isn't just limited to Chicago either. The Wellness Center at Jackson State University, his alma mater, is also named in his honor. You guessed it, the Walter Payton Recreation and Wellness Center. Man, how creative. There's also Nickel Knoll Hill, a popular golf course in Arlington Heights that used to be a steep landfill where Peyton used to run when he was training in the 70s and 80s. The course itself has two plaques on the hill to celebrate Peyton, and the inside of the clubhouse is covered in pictures and memorabilia. So, when players like Eli Manning talk about winning the award, there is a reason that they specifically mention what an honor it is to wear the Man in the Cape patch because of who it's named after. This is special, Eli said. To be mentioned in the same sentence as Walter Payton and to try to help other people and be recognized. To see the amount of people that we've helped, the great work that we've done, done it over the years with my family. For that to have grown as much as it has and to get recognized with this award is special. And while you might think that an award that isn't solely centered around on-the-field performance wouldn't necessarily generate much attention from the players, that couldn't be further from the truth. Check out these quotes from Larry Fitzgerald, a former award winner. You don't really wish to win an award, but to be able to win one this prestigious and to be on the same stage with the same greatest humanitarians and athletes to ever play this game is such a great experience and something I'll cherish for the rest of my life. It's really special. He continued to explain the psychology behind earning the award saying, I wouldn't say I wanted it or pushed for it. Like I said, I don't think anybody goes out to seek attention or adulation for these things you do off the field. I think it's something you're supposed to be recognized as one of the guys that does it the right way in the National Football League. It means a great deal to me, to my community, to my organization. Such a great example for my teammates. That's really what it's about for me. One interesting thing to note about the physical award and subsequently the patch itself, as it's modeled after the award, is the silhouette depicted is not actually Walter Payton. While this may seem shocking, remember the NFL Man of the Year award was around long before it was named in Peyton's honor. The figure featured in the patch is actually a former NFL player who had a far less illustrious career than Walter Payton. Got any idea who we're talking about? He was drafted way back in the fifth round of the 1964 NFL Draft out of Alabama despite never even starting a game for the Crimson Tide. Although he didn't rack up many individual accolades and never earned the NFL Man of the Year award as it only existed for the final three years of his career, he was a part of five championship teams, two Super Bowls, and three NFL championships, all as a member of the Packers. I have to warn you, this reveal might be a little underwhelming, as I'm not sure how many of today's fans even know about Steve Wright, who played offensive tackle for the Packers during their run of greatness in the 60s. So you may be wondering how this rather innocuous offensive lineman from yesteryear ended up as the model for one of the league's most prestigious honors. Well, as Wright himself described it, this was really a right place, right time kind of thing for him. The NFL commissioned artist Daniel Bennett Schwartz to create the award. Schwartz was chosen because a big time NFL executive at the time David Boss liked his work. Specifically, his rendering of a painting of Jim Brown that appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and a series of portraits he did for the Baltimore Colts players. Because Schwartz's studio was in Manhattan, the league asked the Giants to send a player in to model for him. And Wright, who was playing for New York at the time, was a beast of a man. Standing 6'6 six six and 250 pounds, cut from a different cloth compared to his contemporaries. And once Schwartz had Wright in the studio, he decided to sculpt what he called the Gladiator, a lineman standing with the weather cape draped across his shoulders. I decided to place it in the era that I grew up, Schwartz said. He added, nobody expected a cape. Capes had been done away with. To me, he looked like a Greek soldier or gladiator. 
Wright was shocked as anyone when he was chosen for this, saying in his memoir, The statue is supposed to represent the ideal football player, a composite of every man who ever played, or ever will play, professional football. Boy, they sure picked a bummer of a guy to pose for it, didn't they? The guys who won would turn over in their graves if they knew it was me. And you've got to appreciate a little self-deprecating humor, huh? So, next time you see an NFL player wearing that iconic patch, think Charity, Walter Payton, and Stephen Wright. But hey, who is your favorite former Walter Payton Man of the Year winner? Join us in that comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton, and hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.